Shalom, Yasharala. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory into the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka, Kwadash. It's your boy Ash Ibod coming back in the spirit, man, to give y'all another lesson. So I've been wanting to address this for a very, very long time. I get a lot of people who watch my videos on Instagram, who watch my posts on Instagram, who watch my, my channel on YouTube, and a lot of y'all come on my channel like, how can you be a man in the truth, a man of God, and you're cursing, and you're swearing? That's against the Bible. <laughs> you know, it's so funny when I see a lot of you dumb, you, you honestly, you idiots, and it's no disrespect, but the reason why I'm calling you an idiot is because you have no clue what the biblical definition of cursing is. And a lot of times, man, it'd be people who don't understand the Bible, who just came into the truth, or you just came from the Christian church. And these people who taught you, they have no understanding. That's why they said, and I'm going to get this right here in the book of Psalms real, real quick. So this is the, uh, the book of Psalms. Chapter 147, y'all know what I'm coming at, I'm, I'm getting to. Chapter 147, verse 19. He shows his words unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the reason why a lot of y'all come from these Christian churches and you have this misconstrued uh, uh, idea of what a curse is in the Bible is because you learn from people who didn't get the understanding. None of these Christian churches have a real understanding. The Most High is not dealing with any of them. That's why they sit here and they spread lies. And when a lot of y'all sit here and say that because I'm saying shit or fuck or ass or, or you know, stuff like that, you say that I'm blasphemy I'm, I'm going against the most high and i'm sinning you honestly you're bearing false witness against me and i'm going to explain why so let's look up the definition of what a curse actually is because y'all get the definition of a curse from a carnal aspect compared to what the actual bible says that's why you got to read the bible before you make statements like that so let's get the definition of curse right so we're gonna go to blue blue letter bible and i'm reading this off of my phone so uh, if y'all brothers have some, you can you can follow along. So this is what curse to be denounced by the Most High against the serpent and against Cain. So y'all brothers understand when you went to Genesis chapter one, and actually let's get that real quick. Not not chapter one, Genesis chapter three. You obviously understand the serpent, aka the wicked, the wicked people in that day in the Garden of Eden. They came to Eve and deceived her to create idols to the Most High. That's what the apple represents in Genesis. So this is. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord Yahweh said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall you go, and thus shall you eat all the days of the earth. Now when it says, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all nations. Did the Most High t tell the serpent, Fuck you? Did the, Most High, the, did the Most High tell the serpent, You shithead? You dumbass? No. He put a curse, a spiritual curse that puts you in a certain position, meaning that whoever came from that spirit for whatever nation was in the Garden of Eden, they were cursed. Now, that curse has just moved on from the serpent to Esau Eden because the serpent is just a spiritual. Uh, it's just the Satan using a physical manifestation of the serpent. That's why a lot of brothers in the truth say Eve is walking with the serpent, meaning what? A lot of these so-called Israelite women, these Israelite women, so-called black women and Latina women, they always work with Esau to put the Israelite man in captivity. That's why I curse. I mean, think about this. A lot of y'all sit here and say that I'm I'm sinning against the Most High because I'm using these foul language. And you read, you literally read Deuteronomy 28 and 62. So I'll, I'll read verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, your power to observe, to do all his commandments in his statutes, which I, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city and curse shall thou be in the field. Again, is this talking about the language coming from your mouth in regards to saying shit, ass, fuck, dumbass? No, it's a spiritual curse. Think about when you get mad and you get angry. What normally happens? You usually get upset and you want to do something foul. You want to do something deceivious to somebody. That's what a curse actually is. You know, you can read that in the book of James. Let me get that real quick for y'all. And we're going to go back into this topic because... It gets so annoying when I see low-level Israelites, man, sitting here and telling me that I'm going off and I'm sinning because I'm using foul language. When quite honestly, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So this is the book of uh, Salakia. 
uh, this is the book of um, Ephesians. We'll go to Ephesians chapter four, verse. Um, let me see. So Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-six. It says, "Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath." All of you brothers and sisters have had a moment where somebody has done you wrong, and in your mind you've thought about killing that person, robbing that person, beating that person's ass, doing something that the Bible says. Think about the commandments: Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. For a lot of you brothers, when we had that issue in the past Discord where I called somebody a demon, he was bearing false witness against me, saying that I was a Luciferian. Say that I worship the devil Saying that I'm not a man of the Lord That was bearing false witness Not in the fact that I said you have a demon on you Not in the fact that I said something And I used something that might have offended you But what a curse actually is Is when you put ill will on somebody And you act out upon it That's a curse Think about a woman who's mad at you And she puts witchcraft and voodoo In your um in your food Or casts a spell on you That is cursing somebody, bruh Not using language like fuck But the thing is a lot of people, you get hasty and you think you know the Bible when you haven't studied. That's why it's so important to study, to show thyself approved, man. Because a lot of low-level Israelites who haven't read the Bible, and more importantly, haven't read the Bible and actually done research on what the etymology of words mean, you make yourself look stupid. And then a lot of times you have too much pride to be corrected. That's why the scriptures say in the book of uh, Proverbs. Now let's go to Proverbs real quick. Book of Proverbs chapter uh, 16 And we'll go to uh, verse 8 Or 18, so lock you It says Pride goeth before destruction And a haughty spirit before a fall Better is it to be a humble spirit With the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. That's why you have to let go of your pride. That's why Yahweh Shah says for you to enter into the kingdom, you have to be like a little kid. Meaning what? You have to shut up and you have to listen to people who know more than you. Those who are spiritually uh, teenagers or adults. And we're all kids in the eyes of the Most High, of course, and Yahweh Shah, because they have all the knowledge and understanding. We only have a tiny, tiny percentage. But the Most High would deal with certain men to give them certain understanding to teach. That's why he puts them as a shepherd. A shepherd doesn't know more than a sheep. And Lord willing, for those of y'all who want to become a shepherd, eventually you got to study to show thyself approved. That's why it's so stupid and, 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 and you honestly look dumb when you sit here and you tell somebody who's read more Bible than you that you're going off because you're using a word like shit. All right. Now, look, let's look at the definition of curse, because a lot of y'all have gotten the uh, the Babylonian definition of curse. All right. So we're going to find cursing definition. Right. So curse invoke or use a curse against a synonym would be I mean, a sentence would be it often seemed as if the family had been cursed. Think about us. We have spiritual curses, generational curses. That is the definition of placing a curse on somebody. Now, definition two is what a lot of you get misconstrued. Definition of curse, ver uh, number two, utter offensive words in anger or annoyance to swear. Let's look up what swear means. Use offensive language, especially as an expression of anger. So when I sit here and say, you, when I talk about a lot of you lukewarm niggas, man, I said, you don't like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. When I use that word fuck, a lot of y'all get uh, offended because you're weak-minded a lot of people who can't take curse words are extremely weak-minded and that's not justifying me cursing all the time because even though it's not a sin a lot of times when you use too much cursing you you basically you're spreading too much bitterness in your message because at the end of the day we're speaking a sweet song does that make sense and a lot of times when you curse and curse and curse which is what i've done a lot of times in my past i've gotten better but it's something that i have to work on that's what corrupt not doesn't corrupt your message but it makes it unbearable for those who quite frankly can't take it but that doesn't stop me from doing my message just because i curse doesn't mean that i'm going against the most high because what is the definition of curse in the bible to invoke a curse upon somebody what is the definition in mystery babylon utter offensive words and anger so if you get offended by me cursing you need to look inside and see how you're really built you need to gird your loins up like a man because you getting offended and you don't want to listen to a message that could save your soul because i'm using a uh, foul language by babylonian standard that doesn't change the fact that you need to listen to what i'm saying if the most high wanted you to listen to my specific message but again what does yahweh shai say he that have a ear let him hear he that has eyes let him see but let the blind 
lead the blind. So if you're too if you're too proudful and too honestly in your feelings about my about the way I speak, it shows that you probably just don't have an ear. Because there's many brothers that I've talked to using this language who understood what I said and they manned up. Shout out to my brother DG. I remember I was talking to my boy DG and um, he was telling me how he was thinking about going out and preaching the truth. But then he's like, nah, man, I'm going to just do this. And I was like, I'm going to be honest, bro. That's pussy shit. You got to go out there and make videos. He took the correction, bro. He wasn't like, oh, Brandon, you called me a pussy and I can't mess with you. You know, oh, my character's been assassinated and act like a little female because somebody gave you some correction that you got offended. He took it on a stride and he changed. Now look at the brother. He got a YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? He's a leader. He, he's becoming a leader in the discord because he knew how to take correction. You see, a wise man knows how to take correction regardless of the message that is given to you where a fool gets offended at words, man. That's why I say a lot of y'all not built like that. Y'all can sit here and, and, and closet and talk and talk shit behind the scenes, but it just shows me that you're not really built for this truth. That, like I said in the last video, many are called, but few are chosen. The chosen don't get offended by reproach. You think if your Yahweh Shai came and gave you some foul language that you're going to go against your Yahweh Shai? You think your Yahweh Shai is austere. The Most High is austere, dog. Sometimes the Most High will give you a message and not spare your feelings because he's your Lord. And I'm not saying I'm your Lord. I'm just saying... If I'm trying to teach and help you and you can't and you, and you, and you get offended by my, my language and the way I speak and I got too much passion, then dog, my channel's not worth for you. Unsubscribe right now and block the damn channel because I don't got time for weak minded ass niggas and weak minded ass women. But continuing on. So let's look up. Let's see some examples of a curse because there's actually men of the Lord who got appointed, anointed by Yahweh Shai himself. That place curses because there's a difference. There's a wicked curse and a righteous curse. Now, obviously, in these times, we don't have spiritual powers, so we're not able to to do you know things like cast out demons or kill the wicked or anything like that. But back in the time of the apostles, they had moments where they would literally kill people by placing a curse on them, placing a spiritual curse on them. But it was done in righteousness. Again, let's go back to the definition of curse. We'll read down. It says. These divine maledictions carried their effect with them. Prophetical curses were sometimes pronounced by holy men, meaning that holy men at times place curses on people. Continuing on, such curses are not the consequence of passion or revenge. They are prediction. No one on pain of death shall curse father or mother. Meaning what? Just because you have pain or you're upset, you're going to curse your mother and your father. That is against the law. You're not going to curse your mother. Like, I hope something bad happens to my mom. Man, fuck my mom. I hope she dies. And, you know what I'm saying? God forbid. You don't want to do that. And also, a lot of y'all cursing the most high. Remember with Job, with, with his wife. Let's go there real quick. And then I'm going to go back to Acts. So if we go to the book of Job, Job's wife wanted him to curse the most high and die because she knew that if Job said a curse in the name of the most high, he would kill him on spot. So let's go to uh, chapter Job chapter two, verse nine. Then said his wife unto him, does you still retain your integrity? Curse the most high and die because in that situation which Job was going through much affliction and the most high was testing. She was saying, damn, you still trust the Lord, even though he's done all this. He's allowed Satan to put boils. He's killed your kids. He's taken your houses. Why don't you just curse him? Like saying the most high's name in vain so he could kill you on spot because most high can't he used to kill people on spot for uh denouncing his holy name but what did he say verse 10 but he said unto her you speak as one of the foolish women what shall we receive good at the hand of the most high and shall we not receive evil and in all this did not job sin with his lips and there's going to come a point in time when the great tribulation where a lot of y'all who are going to lack faith and lord willing this isn't any of y'all lord willing this isn't me but in the great tribulation, when you're in prison, when Esau, you know, is taking you and you haven't been eating, you haven't been drinking, that a lot of you people are going to forsake the most high and curse his name saying, man, I don't believe in, and I'm not even going to say it because that's such blasphemy to most high. But man, I don't even, I'll use God as an example because God isn't the most high's real name. Man, I don't believe in God, man. God's not working with me. Why am I doing this? You know, God isn't real. That's when you blaspheme the spirit because the most high has truly showed you through the spirit that he is real. So a lot of times, man, he'll test you to see if you're going to waver in his faith does that make sense so when it comes down to it you have to understand that you cannot blaspheme the holy spirit because there is nothing and when i say nothing that will bring you back there is nothing that will bring you back let me see if i can find that uh definition of uh blaspheme let me see blaspheme of the holy spirit all right so let me see what scripture is that in give me one second okay so 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. All right, let's go to 1 John real quick. Chapter 5, verse 6. 
Um, now nah, Salaki, that's not the right scripture. Let me see. KJV. Give me one second. Okay, here it is. So Matthew, we're gonna go to uh, the book of Matthew. We're gonna go to chapter twelve, and we're gonna start on verse thirty-one. It says, "This is Yahweh Shai speaking." Whereof I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. Him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Meaning what? When the Most High has showed you a sign, showed you a miracle, and he's not going to show you an overt miracle, but he's done something in your life, and you start to believe, and then you start to take away that belief because the Most High, for a brief moment, has allowed you to go through affliction, that's blast from the spirit. And you can't come back from that. That's why they call us the witness because only Jacob, only the true Israelites, only the true people of the book can actually witness the spirit in action. That's what that's talking about. So that's why you can't curse the most high because when you curse the most high, basically you slapping, you're trying to slap the most high in the face by saying that he's not real. When the most high is the one true living God. And if he's shown you that, that means that you're extremely blessed. Now getting back into certain aspects of cursing, because a lot of y'all don't don't understand the definition of curse. So let's go to Acts chapter five, verse one. All right. This is the book of Acts chapter five, verse one. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also bring privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your power? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You has not lied unto men, but unto the spirit. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Now, let's break that down. Because this is the time when uh, when the uh, the, when the, uh, the Holy Twelve and the other disciples or whatever, Salak, I don't, I'm getting the disciples and the, and the other apostles, they were going through the land, you know, preaching the gospel, baptizing Gentiles, baptizing Jews, right? Right. And basically what had happened was there was a certain man with his wife who had sold their land. Right. Because at the end of the day, let's go back to Acts chapter four, verse thirty four. It says, neither was there among among them any that lacked for as many were possessed of the land or houses sold them and bought the prices of the things that were sold. Meaning the most high had given certain uh, apostles, you know, blessings. He took care of them. That's why in Matthew six and um, I forgot it, but I read it yesterday. It says, do not worry about how you may eat and drink and how you may have clothes because the most high would take care of it. You see, when you're in the spirit of the most high, he's going to look out for you. But this man and his wife, they they pretty much they were trying to lie and deceive to the uh, to the apostles, and, and especially Peter and saying, I, I don't know sp the specifics of it. But when you get to verse five, it says, and Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost. Now, what is the ghost? It's the spirit. Think about when somebody dies, they give up the spirit. It goes back to the most high and a body dies. So Peter said these words to these people and they died because they tried to go against the most high and lie to him. That means that Peter. Peter placed a spiritual curse to kill them. So you got to understand when it comes to cursing, there's good cursing and then there's bad cursing. You have the cursing in the world, which is people putting a spiritual hex on you, voodoo, you know, divinations through deceiving spirits. And then there's the, the cursing on the right hand side, which is where holy men of the Lord would place a curse upon people, man. Does that make sense? So y'all need to understand this before you come on a brother's page and say, oh, you're saying ass, you're saying shit, you're cursing against the most high. Because when you do that, that, you're bearing false witness because one you don't have the true knowledge and understanding and two you're claiming that a brother is sinning when in actuality he's not that's why you need to be studied to be approved now i want to address the next section when regards to making an oath or swearing because a lot of people need to understand the difference between cursing or you know a lot of people say i swear to god quote unquote right so let's look up what the definition of uh swearing is real quick let me see if i can go through my pictures real quick give me a second all right, let me see. So basically, an oath is a swear, right? So what is an oath? A solemn appeal to the Most High, permitted on fitting occasion in various forms and taken in different ways. God, uh, the Most High, is represented as taking an oath. So also Hamashiach, a.k.a. Christ, and Paul. The precepts swear not at all refers probably to ordinary conversation between man and man. But if the words are taken as referring to oaths, then their intention may have been to show the proper state of Christians to require no oath, that when evil is expelled from among them, every yea and nay will be as decisive as an oath, every promise as binding as a vow. So when you take an oath, what does that mean? You, you know, you, a lot of people say, I swear on the Bible, or I swear, I swear to God. When it talks about swearing, it's not saying like, 
you know, a lot of people say God damn or um, holy shit or Jesus Christ. Because in this in this um, in this world that we live in, people have integrated, quote unquote, swearing through a curse word as meaning that you're swearing to the holy men. I mean, you're swearing to to the uh, to the one true living power. Now, it's not something when you say, oh, God damn. Now, if you say Yahweh duh, or if you say, Lord, why are you doing this? Yahweh. Da, 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 da. You say something foul out your mouth That means you swearing to the most high And if you do that dog Hey I just don't want to be around you in that time Cause there's gonna be some bad things that might happen to you Lest you repent That's what swearing is Again we can look this up And we can go online I mean um we can go on google And um let's look up the definition of Uh Let's look up oath Alright So oath a solemn promise often invoking a divine witness regarding one's future action or behavior now let's look at the second definition a profane or offensive expression used to express anger or other strong emotions again you see swear word it says an offensive word so again when y'all sitting here and saying oh you're swearing to god da 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 because you're cursing you are wrong because biblically the definition of an oath or a swear means that you're swearing on the name of the most high so again let's look up the definition of swearing because again, there's there's swearing the uh, the use of offensive language, but that's not the true meaning biblically. It's right here. Make a solemn statement or promise, understanding to do something or affirming that something is the case. So you're making a promise to the Most High to take an oath, and we can get a definition of that in Leviticus chapter five and, and salute to a uh, kingdom path. Because when I was uh, courting a chick about a month ago. Um, I was watching one of his videos in regards to making vows in the name of the Lord. And basically, when you brothers have certain afflictions in your life, a lot of times what's going to happen is that you're going to feel like you're too weak because a lot of things that we do on a daily basis are not against the law. Like masturbating is not against the law. Um, uh, drinking is not against the law. But for certain people, we have certain demons that when we do things, they cause us to not be in our best state. Does that make sense? Like if a brother's masturbating five times a day, it's not against the law, but it's not profitable for you. So a lot of times what our forefathers in the past, and you can actually do this now, is that you will make an oath in the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. That's when you make the oath. Not when you're saying, I swear to God. No, but then again, if you know who the Most High is and you put something on God and you know who the Most High truly is, he's revealed yourself to him, himself to you. And you say, man, I swear to God, I'm going to make it on time. I swear to God, I'm going to do this. And your ass don't do it. This is what's going to happen to you. Let's go to Leviticus chapter five, verse four. It says, or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good. Whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath. Again, that word oath and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it. He shall be guilty in one of these. So meaning if let's say example, you say, I swear to the most high that um, I'm not going to I'm not going to smash more than one chick a week. Right. So meaning you're not going to do good. So it says, what is so it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath? So you just, you just made an oath between you and the Lord because the most high, again, he hears everything. We're getting Proverbs 15 and three. Behold, the Lord's eyes are in every place beholding good and evil. He's seeing everything that you're doing 24 seven, either through his holy angels, but he's omnipresent. His spirit is everywhere. Does that make sense? So when you pronounce that to the most high through an oath and you try to hide it from him, meaning what? Let's say example, you know, you smash two chicks in a week, right? And you, and you realize that you smash two chicks in a week, you only supposed to smash a chick once a week, right? Basically, you just broke that oath with the most high. But a lot of times what you'll do is you'll try to just fight, oh, well, technically that's not it. I'm good. I'm going to be la, la, da, 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 And then boom, you just lied on the most high's name, bro. So again, let's go down. It says when he knows of it, meaning what? You knew that you did it, but you did it anyway. Then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. Meaning what? When you realize you broke the oath that you made to the most high, you have to ask the most high for forgiveness saying, Lord, I'm sorry that I did that. Lord, can you please forgive me? And I'll pay it back to you some way. Because again, the most high, he, he's, he's deliver. He'll give, he'll deliver onto you good or bad through Satan or through his son. You see what I'm saying? So verse five, it says, and it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for a sin, which he has sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. Now, obviously, this is the sacrifices that we have before Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, um, you know, uh, gave up his blood for the sins of Israel, because back in the day, again, 
we used to make sins and we'd have to get, offer up a daily offering, a monthly offering, a day of atonement offering, which is, by the way, is tomorrow. But uh, we would make up an offering to the Lord so he could forgive us of his sin. But Yahweh Shah was that ultimate lamb without blemish because he is the lamb. He is the he is the most high son. So when he sacrificed his blood, it was deemed righteous in the eyes of the most high. So like example, let's say you made that oath, right? In the ancient times, if you smashed two chicks and you made that oath and you and, and you sin and you knew you sinned, you'd have to offer up a goat, give it to the holy priest. He would sacrifice it before the Lord. It would be a sweet savor to the Lord. Now, because you have the blood of Hamashiach, he can uh, cover the transgressions of your sin. Long as you repent and believe in his name. That's why you Old Testament only niggas, you're going to get killed and destroyed because you don't believe in the son. You don't believe in how shot. So all the sins that you've been doing since birth are not getting forgiven. And then when the day of judgment comes, he's going to judge you based off of that. And long story short, he's going to allow you to be destroyed in a lake of fire and you're going to uh, come back in everlasting shame and contempt. Does that make sense? But continuing on, and this is another example. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter one, verse 13. So you can get an example of why, if you don't have the blood of Hamashiach on you, why anything you do in the eyes of the Lord are not being done. That's why I say a lot of y'all who are Old Testament only, you niggas are delusional if you think the Most High is truly dealing with you, bro. Because he's not at all. I promise you that. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter one, verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths. The calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is an iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make your prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood, meaning what? If you if you if you got the blood on your hands, you've not been forgiven through the blood of Hamashiach. And you're making a lot of these vain oaths and things like that. The Most High is not going to hear anything you do. Even if you do the Sabbath, even if you do the moon, new moon, even if you try your best to follow the law, if you don't have that true blood of your house shy to, to cover your, the, the, the multitude of your sins, you are not going to be seen or deemed worthy in the eyes of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That's why when we say Yahweh, we have to say Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, because only through Yahweh Shai's name will he hear our prayers. You get what I'm saying? That's why it's extremely important. So a lot of times when y'all brothers make oaths, and honestly, you're not a man of, man of the most high, and you swearing on God and all this, but you don't do it, it shows me you don't have any fear in the most high. And honestly, anybody who does that, cut their ass off, because they're not worthy of your time because the most high is not dealing with them now let's go to the original point of this conversation so when i sit here and i say fuck shit and all these things that is language that is how somebody perceives what you're saying because the word fuck is not in the bible shit is not in the bible these are words that have been denoted as offensive in our eyes think about it man think about it in the bible there's a specific scripture that says nigger now let me look that up real quick Let's look that up. All right. So that is, let me see if I can find it. I know it's in King James Version Bible. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. So let's go to the book of Acts again. And let's go to chapter 13 and, and verse 1. So this is the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 1. It states, now there were in the church that was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called nigger now i'm saying nigger because it's n-i-g-e-r so that's how they pronounce it nigger and if you think about that in the 15 1600s you could call somebody nigger they wouldn't be offended but in this day and age esau has manipulated the word to be something offensive the meaning of words in this society are based off of the person so just because society says you shouldn't say the word fuck or ass does not mean that it's offensive in the eyes of the most high because the most high doesn't really even hear anything lest it be in the hebrew the hebrew the paleo hebrew by the way not the assyrian hebrew the Paleo Hebrew is the most important language. That's why you must make your prayer to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, because that is his true name in the ancient tongue. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't know the name and you're praying, like example, when I went through spiritual warfare, I prayed to God in the name of Jesus because at that moment, that's who I knew the, the, the true living power to be. It wasn't until the Most High revealed to me his name that I started saying Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. But the Most High saved me in that moment when I was battling demons. And I prayed to the Most High for protection because he understood at that point, that's who, the, that's who, that's what his name was in my eye. So if the Most High is reading your mind and understands what you call upon the Most High as, he'll do something for you until you get the name. Once you get the name, you have to start saying it. And if you don't say it, you're being rebellious and the Most High is not going to hear your prayers. That's why it's extremely imperative for y'all to get the name right. Because when you're saying Ahaya and Yahuwah and Yeshia and all this other stuff, 
The Most High is deluding you into thinking that name has power when at the end of the day, he's going to ask you to be called upon that specific name to get delivered. That's what Zechariah 13 and 9 is really talking about. Does that make sense? Now, getting back into this specific point. So you got to understand when it comes to certain words, they may be offensive to you or to society, but that doesn't mean they're offensive to the Most High. Because at the end of the day, I really don't give a shit how you feel when I say the word shit. It's only if the Most High deems it unworthy. And clearly, if I've been in the truth for a long time and I've been saying words and the Most High has not cast me off, it means that it's not offensive in the eyes of the Lord. Just because it's offensive to you doesn't mean it's offensive to the eyes of the Lord. So you really look at, to need to look at yourself as a man or as a woman and see, hmm, am I being too sensitive? Hmm, can I take this? Hmm, if not, then it shows that you're kind of weak-minded. Now, the reason why I'm trying to get better at cursing is because when you speak, your tongue is like a sword. Does that make sense? When you have a, when you, when you speak, your, 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 your sword can, can cut a lot of people. I mean, think about Revelation chapter, uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Chapter 11, verse four, it says, and I will give unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the most high of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth. Meaning what? Your mouth, you speak fire. Think about it. You you know a lot of people, when they preach, they say, I'm cutting you down because your mouth is a sword. Your tongue is a sword. Does that make sense? That's why I, I name myself Ash Ibot. It means fire servant because I'm a fiery person. I have a fiery personality. Let's look up the definition of fiery so y'all brothers can understand what that means. Fiery means consisting of fire or burning strongly and brightening. Having a, a verse two, having the bright color of fire, having a passionate, quick tempered nature, meaning I have a very passionate, you know, I can get extremely happy or extremely upset. And then you can really feel the feelings and emotion in my words, just like in my music. And it can be a gift and a curse. It's a gift because think about what a fire does. Think about what a sword does. A sword cuts off things that don't need to be done. A sword kills your enemies. But a sword, if it's wielded improperly, can cut your friends. It can cut yourself and allow yourself to be cut off because your, your words manifest into your life. Now let's get this in the book of James real quick. So that way you brothers can understand this. This is James chapter three, verse six. I'll read verse five. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Again, the fire of the tongue, it kindles the fire. It kindles you. And when you, that's why the Yahweh Shai says, I baptize you with spirit or wind and fire because the wind is the spirit, the thing that you feel. And the fire is he puts those words into your mouth to speech. When someone, a brother, a man of the Lord speaks to you, that fire comes inside you because he's kindled that flame. Think about it. You are, you are, think about a, a fire that has no light. You got to put that fuel and ignite it. And that's when it starts to burn and create warmth and create light into the path because we're all born in spiritual darkness but when we get that fire through from hamashiach he allows us to see everything around us and not only the fire it warms you it comforts you and it keeps away all the thing about when you have a fire in the wilderness it keeps away animals think about the animals these are the demons esau edom these um jake women who are your enemy not all of them but the unrighteous ones and even your unrighteous brothers man who have an evil eye towards you so when you have that fire you have that warmth you have that comfort but the thing you need to understand about a fire and this is the reason why i work best to try to control a lot of my curse words verse six and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast of birds and of serpents of and of things in the sea is tame and has been tamed of mankind but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison meaning what that your tongue can be your poison because your tongue is what can blast you the most high. Your tongue, depending on how you speak to an officer, can allow you to go to jail. Your tongue, depending on how you talk to a woman, can offend her to the point where she's not dealing with you. And that's the issue that I've had and I still struggle with is because I have such a fiery personality, my fire can spread out of control. Think about a wildfire. When you put a fire in a really dry place, it burns everything up. And it's not bad to burn something up, but you got to take it out at the right amount because if you overheat it, it'll burn. Meaning what? You will burn that bridge you'll burn that connection that's my issue a lot of times is that my fire will get out of control sometimes i can kindle it right some people can take the fire but other ones can't get in the kitchen so a lot of times i repel a lot of people around me who might have wanted edification but at the end of the day the most high puts certain people in a place and you got to understand who you are as a man i talk with more fire compared to other people because that's just who i am manata zark from gms south carolina he talks with a lot of fire because that's who he is and at the end of the day we're not apologetic because that's who the most high made us if the most 
Mosai didn't want me to have fire, he wouldn't have put me in this position. He wouldn't have allowed me to figure out that my name should be Ash Aibai through the spirit of, of, of Hamashiach, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's exactly what it is. But you got to be able to harness and control the fire. Just like, um, because at the end of the day, man, you know, that fire can not only burn everything around you, but think about you when you're in the kitchen with a fire. If that fire gets too deep, you can't escape from it. And eventually you burn yourself, which is by what? Getting so angry, getting so mad that you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Or that you do certain things that go in the eye, you, you, you know, because that's what this scripture says. 4 and 26, it says, be you angry and sin not. Let the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So a lot of times when you have a fiery personality, you can get so angry and upset upset that a lot of times you can say or do something that you shouldn't have done a lot of our brothers they get mad they kill a nigga boom they in jail for life they get mad they run somebody off the road boom now your ass is dead they get angry and they do certain things that they shouldn't have done and you can't take back that that's why the most says, says be you angry i mean uh, apostle paul said be you angry and sin not because when you can control your anger and when you can allow your anger to not become wrath because wrath is where you actually act out on something right Let's get the definition of wrath. So it says extreme anger. Now, I want to uh, see if I can find this in the Blue Letter Bible. And then I'm going to end this lesson. All right. So let's look up wrath in the Blue Letter Bible. All right. Let me see. All right. So wrath. It says to be angry, a frown or turning away of the face in grief or anger. Wrath is used with reference to both the Most High and man. When used of the Most High is to be understood that there is the complete absence of that caprice and unequal quality, so prominent in the anger attributed to the most to the to the most to the gods of the heathen and to man. The divine wrath is to be regarded as a natural expression of divine nature, which is absolute holiness, manifesting itself against the willful, high-handed, deliberate, and excusable sin and iniquity of mankind. The Most High's wrath is always regarded in Scripture as the just, proper, and natural expression of His holiness. All right. Now I want to get down to human wrath. Uh, wrath, when used of man, is the exib exib exhibition of an enraged sinful nature and is therefore always inexcusable. It is for this reason that man is forbidden to allow anger to display itself in his life. He is not to give place unto wrath, nor must he allow the son to go down upon his wrath. He must not be angry with his brother, but seek agreement with him, lest the judgment that will necessarily fall upon the wrathful be meted out to him. So I wanted to get that because... When it comes to wrath and anger, there's two types. The most high can be angry at you, but it's good. Now, a lot of times people will get angry at you when in actuality is bad. And you got to understand when you're a man of the Lord and the most high is using you as a vessel, as a voice, he will allow you to be angry because those angry words can correct somebody from going off and doing things. But also you got to not get angry from your from your specific things. Again, let me get this um, one precept. I think it's uh, Proverbs. Let me see. So let me go to the book of Proverbs really quick. Chapter three, verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not unto your own understanding. So when it comes to understanding when it's a good to, be, to have wrath and when it's bad to have wrath, it's really up to the situation. If in your spirit, something is causing you to be angry and make a video like example, when I get upset or annoyed, when people come on my channel saying, oh, you're cursing, you're, you're, you're against sin. I can be wrathful because you're bearing false witness against me and I'm justified to be, to, to speak to you a certain way. Now, example, let's say I get mad because of something that I did. Like example, I didn't pay my bill and my car gets towed. I can't get angry and get mad and beat a nigga ass because it was all on me. I was the reason why that happened. So you got to always look and see if the wrath is justified through righteousness or if it's just your own your own dumb mistakes that you've done in your past that makes you get mad and that's why you got to be very careful especially if you have a fiery personality because again that fire is good in certain doses but if you let that fire get out of control it can burn and destroy not only people not only relationships but also yourself so I just want to, uh, you know, say shalom on to you, brothers. I hope this lesson was edifying. Again, using the word shit, fuck, ass, you know, things like that is not a sin to the most high. It's when you place a specific curse on somebody, when you swear on the name of the most high and you don't follow through with what you said, man. That's what it is. That's why all you brothers need to be a man of the word. You ladies need to be women of your word, man. But I'm specifically talking to you men because it's, it's easier for a woman to go back on her word. But as a man, you got to stay steady. You got to be 10 toes down. So I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory unto the Most High. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Raka Kwadash. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect of the nation of Yasharala. And I'll catch you.